discuss all the components of bile. Is that right? That is this exocrine function. Then liver has endocrine function. It secretes lot of substances in blood. There we have already talked the plasma proteins like albumins or alpha globulins, beta globulins, then fibrinogen, prothrombin, and other coagulation factors, right? Or lipoproteins, right? Even we did not mention that in deamination of the what is that? Amino acids, right? Uh, ammonia is produced and then urea is produced. That is also a function of hepatocytes and it secretes urea into blood, which will eventually will pass out through urine. Is that right? Then, then it was having function, metabolic functions like converting the glucose into glycogen when the glucose level in the blood is high and insulin level is high. But uh, when what really happens when the, uh, in between the food, when blood glucose level goes down, then hepatocytes or liver has another function that it will break down the glycogen into glucose. So one of the function of the liver is uh, that it is uh, stabilizing the blood glucose level, right? That when there is high glucose level, it will convert the glucose into glycogen. When blood glucose level is down, it will break down the glycogen back to glucose and release the glucose into blood. Then it has one more very interesting function, gluconeogenesis, right? That if there is uh, blood glucose level is really down, then under the directions of glucagon and other hormones, it can synthesize glucose from non-carbohydrate sources like from the amino acid uh, breakdown or from the fatty acids, right? Uh, breakdown, it can eventually produce glucose, right? Then it has a very important function of detoxification. As we discussed, many toxins coming from GIT are taken up by the hepatocytes and they are detoxified and in, in, in another way that many drugs which you take, they are also metabolized in the hepatocytes and they are altered. We call it drugs biotransformation. Many hormones in your body are also catabolized by the hepatocytes. Then of course, one more function was hepatocytes could take up the IgA from the space of DC plasma cells and uh, pump them into, into biliary canalicular system. Eventually, they will drain into GIT. Is that right? Any question up to this? Just to sum up, the bile drainage system. Bile drainage start from this center. Here there was bile canaliculi. As they move more on the periphery, uh, they become wider and they may be lined by special cells. Then they are called canal of herring, H-E-R-I-N-G. Okay. So bile canaliculi convert into canal of herrings. Then they come here and they, con uh, they, they convert into cholangeules. And cholangeules come together and make, what was this? bile ductules and then bile ducts, then bile ducts convert, fuse together and make left and uh, right and the left bile duct, then common bile duct, then just we lost, come go back all the way. <laughs> Look, in between the hepatocytes, what was there? You will tell me. No, no, start from the hepatocytes, bilary, bile canaliculi, then canal of herring then cholangeules, then bile ductules, bile ductules or bile duct beginning at the bile ductule which are present at the portal triads or portal areas. Then bile ductule go into, all of them fuse, some of them into right bile duct and then left bile duct. Then right and left bile duct become together and become common hepatic duct because right, right hepatic duct and the left hepatic duct, I think. My glucose level is down also, right? Common hepatic duct. Then cystic duct will come and then it will become common bile duct, right? And eventually with the pancreatic duct, common bile duct fuse together and they drain at the ampoule of water in the second part of duodenum and release the bile and pancreatic juices there. Is that right? Any question about all this thing? Okay, I'm going to take a test before I leave you, right? First of all, uh, classic lobule, it has which structure in the center? Central vein. Central vein. Portal lobule has which structure in the center? Portal, portal triad or bile duct system, right. Uh, when we talk about hepatic acinus, then zonation of hepatocytes are done according to the level of oxygen supplied. Is that right? Then there is another question. How many in the liver, how many input system are there? Portal vein, then there is hepatic artery. There are two input system. 
how many output system are from the liver? There are again two. One is the hepatic vein out and other is the lymphatic system out. You forget that. Is that right? Then liver is all parenchyma of the liver is covered by a very strong capsule that is called a capsule of glycine, which is of course made of a lot of connective tissue or, uh, and from th that capsule septa go inside the liver. They divide the liver into lobes and then lobules and the, those are the lobules we were studying, right? Another thing. The blood is moving in a classic lobule from the periphery to the center and bile is moving in the classic lobule from center to the periphery and lymph, lymph is moving in a classic lobule from center to the periphery. Is that right? Few clinical points, of course you will study in pathology in detail, that liver is a very favorite from some virus. Hepatitis A virus attack the liver and hepatitis A virus is acquired by orofecal route and it is also called infectious hepatitis and hepatitis A virus produces acute hepatitis but usually does not produce chronic hepatitis. Then there is another virus, hepatitis B virus, which is transferred by blood transfusions or body secretions, right? And hepatitis B virus produces acute hepatitis. It may also produce in some people chronic hepatitis. And if chronic hepatitis is really prolonged, then patient may have cirrhosis. And sometimes even in such liver, what may develop? Hepatocellular carcinoma may develop. Wow. Is that right? Then there is hepatitis C virus. That is also coming through blood transfusions or it is coming through the body secretions and hepatitis C virus produces a lot of chronic cases of hepatitis and in patients who are suffering with the chronic hepatitis due to hepatitis C virus, they also have a high risk to develop cancer in the liver. Is that right? Then we can talk about, yes, we can talk about jaundice. For jaundice, we have four videos in the pathology. But here I will just tell you one thing. In, in jaundice, there is a high level of bilirubin in your blood. Why bilirubin level should be high in the blood? One reason may be RBCs are breaking down excessively. A lot of bilirubin is produced and liver cannot handle that. Other mechanism of jaundice may be that hepatocytes are unable to take up the bilirubin from the blood. Another mechanism may be that bilirubin is taken up by the hepatocyte, but within the hepatocyte, enzymes which are supposed to uh, conjugate. conjugate the bilirubin with glucuronic acid, those enzymes are called glucuronyl transferases, those may be deficient, right? Then bilirubin cannot be handled. Another mechanism may be that hepatocyte take up the bilirubin, conjugate the bilirubin, but they cannot secrete the bilirubin into biliary canal equi. Again, bilirubin will go back to the blood and jaundice. Let me make a simple diagram. Let's talk from here. This is your spleen. Either there is too much, number one mechanism is too much RBC breakdown. And so much bilirubin coming that hepatocytes cannot handle. Number two mechanism that bilirubin is coming in normal but hepatocytes are unable to take it. Number three mechanism within the hepatocyte. Hepatocytes are unable to conjugate it. Number four is they conjugate it well but they cannot secrete it to the biliary system. This was fourth. Fifth is that biliary system drainage within the Liver is impaired. We call it intrahepatic cholestasis. Cholestasis means stasis of bile. Bile cannot drain. Or through the liver, bile come out, but common bile duct or other part of the main ducts are blocked. We call it extrahepatic cholestasis. Or simply we call it extrahepatic bile flow obstruction. That is the sixth mechanism. So mechanism number one for the jaundice is too much breakdown of RBCs and bringing too much unconjugated bilirubin there. Number two is that hepatocytes are unable to take up the bilirubin. Next mechanism is hepatocytes do take up but they are unable to conjugate. Next is they do conjugate, they do take up and conjugate but they are unable to secrete into biliary canalicular system. Then next is biliary canalicular system is blocked within the liver. And next mechanism is uh, bile drainage system is blocked outside the liver. Is that right? So all these conditions can produce jaundice. Right? Important thing, if RBCs are producing more bilirubin 
or bilirubin is not taken up or bilirubin is not conjugated all these conditions will produce unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia because bilirubin is not getting conjugated if there is too much bilirubin pro production or bilirubin uptake by hepatocyte is impaired or bilirubin conjugation is impaired and first three mechanisms what will happen what type of bilirubin in the blood will be high unconjugated, unconjugated. then onward if bilirubin is getting conjugated but after that if it cannot be secreted into bilirubin alveoli or it cannot drain down it means bilirubin is getting conjugated but it cannot go to git so spill back to the blood that is conjugated, conjugated hyperbilirubinemia right we'll discuss in detail these things when you will study patho is there any question no question class dismissed thank you